Regression wisdom number four says that association does not necessarily imply causation. So referring back to the unemployment versus murder rate example, we notice that as the percent unemployed increases in Metropolis, the murder rate also increases. So does that mean that unemployment causes murders um, or, or creates conditions that are right for murders or whatever? Possibly. That is a possible explanation. But without a controlled experiment where we would actually have maybe uh, two parts of the city and we would put unemployed people in one part and randomly put, you know, employed people in another part and we observe the murder rates and stuff. It, it, if, unless you can do that randomly um, as an experiment, which we really can't because that would not be ethical, there's really no way to know for sure if it's a cause and effect. So here's what we can say. Um, so I wrote down here, in the absence of a controlled experiment, we can only say there is an association between unemployment and murder rate. And obviously, that would be unethical here, definitely unethical in this case. Sometimes controlled experiments are unethical, sometimes they're impossible. Um, but so the, there's three possibles. Maybe X causes Y. Maybe unemployment rate, unemployment percent of unemployment does cause murder rate. Maybe murder rate causes people, more people to be unemployed. Probably not, but you know, you know, maybe it, higher murder rate causes businesses to move out of the area and people become employed. I mean, it's a possible explanation. Uh, or maybe there's some other variable that causes the observed changes in both X and Y. Um, so we don't know what's going on here uh, that might, might have issues, you know, poverty, um, maybe economy, maybe there's some other things that are sort of underlying causes that are, that are responsible for both. Um, so we need to be really careful when you attribute cause and effect to correlation because it can cause people to make wrong decisions. For example, um, someone might notice that, um, you know, people who take advanced math classes tend to do better in college. Therefore, we should require all students to take advanced math classes. That can be a problem because some, for some students, advanced math isn't their strong area. So requiring them to take advanced math classes may keep them out of classes that are more in their area that would help them be more successful. Um, but if a policymaker observes that, you know, maybe a legislator or something is presented with that data, hey, look at this, people who, who take more math, advanced math classes in high school tend to do better in college. Well, maybe there's an underlying reason. Maybe those students are more studious. Maybe they're more motivated. Maybe there's some under, and because they're mo mo more motivated, they tend to do better in both advanced math classes and in college. Um, but that doesn't mean there couldn't be someone who could do really well in college that isn't good in advanced math classes. So you have to be really careful about making policies based on a perceived cause and effect when it really isn't there, or you don't know if it's there. So that's our third piece of regression wisdom. Just because we have a high correlation or a linear relationship between two variables does not mean that there is a cause and effect relationship. We can only say that there is an association between the two variables.